<laughs> they are very far away. <laughs> so we can give an independent, detached uh, view of the situation. <laughs> but anyway, welcome to this uh, panel. And I'm going to begin by stating what should be obvious, but what is sometimes not so obvious, which is that this is one of the most difficult problems on peninsula Earth, on, on Earth, right? The Korean Peninsula issue. And I think we will be fooling ourselves if we thought there's a simple silver bullet solution somewhere that could magically solve the situation. It's very messy. It's very complicated. <laughs> it has many dimensions. It has many players. So our goal today with this extremely distinguished panel that we have here today is to see that whether or not we can throw more light on this issue and maybe come up with some useful suggestions or maybe some out-of-the-box suggestions that haven't been thought about before. At the end of the day, I hope that at the end of this hour, we will have to at least move the needle a little bit <laughs> on the Korean Peninsula issue. It's, a, it's an ambitious goal, but we'll try to, to do it. And, and I want to introduce this distinguished panel, you know, Minister Kang from uh, the Republic of Korea, Ambassador Suga from China, Secretary Ash Carter from the United States of America. You, you know their very distinguished backgrounds. And I'm going to start with uh, uh, Minister Kang, whom I've discovered is an old friend of mine from the UN days. <laughs> Our paths cross again. So, you know, you, as you can see from the map, <laughs> it's so obvious that South Korea has the greatest amount of interest in trying to reduce tensions in the peninsula. Mm -hmm. And I think first, in the first part, we'll talk a bit about what we can do about emulating the situation, and then we'll move on to the nuclearization issue mm -hmm. and what we do about it. So uh, maybe I'll open, ask you to uh, uh, open the discussion, Minister Kang, by giving us your assessment of where we are today mm -hmm. on this issue. Well, thank you very much. Very honored to be here with you, uh, Ambassador Mabubani. I'm a huge fan of yours since your <laughs> UN days, and I'm really happy to be here to be a part of the, the panel. You say you are an impartial um, moderator, but I don't think anybody can be impartial about what's yeah. going on, on on the Korean Peninsula these days, which is basically the, the greatest global security threat uh, in the form of North Korea's nuclear and missile development. And this is the, the global, global issue. It's uh, clearly demonstrated that as such by the series of sanctions resolutions that the Security Council has adopted. So in this context of a growing nuclear and uh, missile <coughs> threat from North Korea, I think uh, we have been uh, trying to manage the situation, but also trying to gather the collective unity of the global community in dealing with this issue. Our basic position on this has been uh, North Korea will never be accepted as a nuclear power as it seems to want to, um, that it has to change course and denuclearize. And this is a shared goal of the international community as, as written out in, in the successive Security Council resolutions, and that unless it change course, it will continue to face uh, sanctions and pressure. And every time it conducts another provocation, there will be more pressure and sanctions. And this has been the story of this issue for the past couple of years, and now we have 10 sanctions resolutions designed to cut off uh, funds flowing into their, their WMD program. But the message, the second part of that message has always been they need to change course and if they change course there is a better future. Um, my government's position vis-a-vis -vis the North has been that we harbor no hostility, we are not seeking regime change, we are not going to march upwards uh, militarily, and we are not seeking rapid or, or unification by absorption. We want <coughs> peace, but for us to have peace on a lasting basis, we really need denuclearization. So this has been a consistent messaging and approach of my government um, in close consultation with our ally, the United States, and, and the international community. And, and I think everybody I talk to, whether it's the immediate neighborhood or further off partners in ASEAN and the European Union and Latin America, they all support this approach, uh, all designed to lead to a peaceful political resolution to this issue. So 
So that's been the endeavor of the, the, of the new government since the past seven months. And at the beginning of this year, we get a reaction from North Korea in the form of they want to come to the Olympics and they want to jumpstart South North Korean discussions. Um, first with the Olympics, but also beyond that. So I, I do believe that this combination of pressure and sanctions on the one hand, with the added message and offer of a better future, should they change course, has worked hand in hand uh, to, to change North Korea's calculations, if I may put it that way, and they are now there discussing their participation in the Olympics with us. Um, the talks began with a high level discussion at ministerial level between the two sides on January 9th, and the basic agreement that came out of that discussion was, yes, they will come to the Olympics and Paralympics. Um, we will work together to ease tension on the Korean Peninsula and restart military authorities' discussions toward that end. And, and third, that inter South North Korea will continue the, the discussion, dialogue, to deal with other issues on the table between the suit ties. So these three are are the agreements at the high level, and we are now implementing the first part of it, which is their participation in the Olympics. So the recent days have seen a flurry of activities <laughs> of working level discussions. We going up to check out some of the venues where we will be having joint events. Their athletes coming, their art troops coming to check out the venues that uh, we will be uh, performing together or, or, or the sports venue. So this is what's going on back home, so I'm watching the news very closely. Mm. But, and, 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 and this I think has been broadly welcomed. Uh, mm. I was in Vancouver last week of 24 <coughs> ministers to discuss how better to deal with the North Korean missile mm. issue. And the general sentiment was that this is a good thing, mm. that they've come out of their shell, if I could put it that way, and, and coming out using the century of the Olympics. Mm -hmm. So it's a good thing. Uh, I know there are different views on, on the, the, this uh, participation, but overall it's a good thing. It's an opportunity for engagement, an opportunity, hopefully, mm -hmm. that leads to greater opportunities for engagement and, uh, and a, a denuclearization, denuclearization mm -hmm. discussion. <coughs> so let me just put it. Start thank you, thank one. you. That was a good uh, overview of where we are today. Uh, and you described where we, the situation very well in terms of the progress we made. But can I, please forgive me if I asked you the slightly provocative question. Mm -hmm. You know, over the years you mentioned the sanctions that have been piled on mm -hmm. North Korea. You've had, you said, 10 resolutions. There seems to be a correlation where you have more and more sanctions and more and more North Korean missile tests and uh, nuclear tests. What, mm -hmm. what, how do we change that correlation? Well, the sanctions are a response of the international community mm. to their successive provocations. Mm. Mm. So it's um, clearly North Korea it says, and it, it doesn't hide the fact that it has ambitions to become a nuclear power. Mm. And the response of the international community is that that is simply, mm. it will never be accepted not as a nuclear yeah. power, not just as a matter of a security threat, but as a matter of fundamental basis mm. of the global security structure, which is the NPT. Mm -hmm. and, and to allow a, um, a, a country that has successively violated mm. uh, the Security House Resolution, uh, it, it would completely undermine the mm. whole global security setup. So for various reasons, mm. uh, it, it, I, the global community will never accept uh, the North mm. Korea's ambition. Uh, but it has continued to stay with that ambition. And every time, but at, to realize though that ambition, it needs to test. Mm. And this, it, there's nuclear tests, missile tests. And to successive testing, mm. you, you, we, we ratcheted up the pressure mm. and, the, and the sanctions. So the sanctions are a response. And in fact, the latest sanctions resolution has added another uh, added paragraph, which is that you know we're and the latest one is the newest element is the uh, the interdiction mm -hmm. uh, to stop illicit transfer uh, ship to ship of goods that shouldn't be going in or out of North Korea. Mm -hmm. um, but so and these are ten accumulative sanctions resolutions. It's not one replacing the previous one. Mm -hmm. It's a so you have 10 um, s that spell out various elements of, of the yeah. sanctions. Um, but I think 
the latest one even says that should North Korea provoke again, mm -hmm. the Security Council will will consider further yeah. sanctions measures. Mm -hmm. So the pressure has been building, um, and uh, I think. The the, uh, there's the global unity around has also been exceptional. These sanctions resolutions passed by the Security Council, if you look at the number of national reports mm. coming into the Council, uh, it's extraordinary. Uh, the, the big one, which was 20, 2070 adopted at the beginning of uh, uh, 2016 <coughs> after their, their uh, fourth nuclear test, mm. it has over 100 countries that have now submitted reports um, on their implementation of the, the sanctions resolution. Thank you. So as you know, Ambassador Suga, again, if you look at the map, <laughs> China is very close. And you, uh, only two countries have borders with North Korea. One is South Korea, the other one is China. So, you know, from China's perspective, Russia, how do we... Russia also, a Russia. little bit. A little bit. Little bit. A little, little bit, bit. Little bit yes, up yes, in the yes, corner. Behind. Thank you for I've, correcting me. I've, <laughs> I've flown over it. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't show very clearly. <laughs> but I'll show it very clearly. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay, what, what's your perspective? Uh, well, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful arrangement, the map. As you can see that, uh, well, although in the total, uh, in the world, uh, so far as the world, the air land mass area is concerned, it only constitutes a little, tiny little part. However, now, whenever anything happens there, it catches attention, not only from Korean peninsulas to both the neighbors, but also it catches attention from the whole in Asia Pacific Ocean and <coughs> United Nations World Organization and the world. Why? Because there is a, there is a quandary left in the unsolved in the last few uh, decades the minister and I, we were both our students, graduate students in the United States in our programs. We studied both the hot and cold wars. So this is one of the <coughs> unsolved <coughs> tough issues in the world which bears birthmarks of both the cold and hot wars. As the Chinese saying goes, when you have a piece of ice, by the way, I worked in Iceland before. I know if you have the glacier, the ice formed, we have a, say, a, a piece of ice three feet deep. It takes more than one day for it to, to be thawed. Well, what about China's position? Our position, our policies is three prone. Our neighbor, we hope that, like us, who is bent on modernization program, uh, we call it the five in one domestically. We also want a five in one program in the world about the peace, security, economic development, better management in society, better raising living standards of the people, plus environmental protection. That's what we hope to do. At our doorsteps, can you imagine that a war is going to happen so that's not, going, that's not going to be conducive to our national interests. Well, how to have this decade-old problem to be solved? Our policy concern is, consists of three parts. Number one, denuclearization of the peninsula. I quite agree with uh, what the Madam Secretary just said. And I think this is a, a something uh, which I might call a, na a convergence of the national interests between them are both Korea, Republic, China, and the United States. And I, I, I'm, I'm sure that there are members from the, who are from the United States. So who is for war in the peninsula? So I think that the denuclearization constitutes for the good and the interests of the international community. Number two, peace and stability in the peninsula as the current and long-term goal. We want an area which would have lasting and sustaining 
peace and stability and development, prosperity. Well, that being said, can we find a road, a path agreed upon by all parties towards that end? Now, later, if the audience from the beautiful room, if you stand close to the window, you will see the top of this beautiful snowy mountain top. Now, who can tell me there is only one path leading to the top? Can you draw a straight line? No, it's impossible. So zigzagging way. But whatever you do, we hope it will be peaceful. It will be, well, through negotiations, through partnerships, through cooperation, rather than a surgical cooperation, a regime change. <coughs> Just now, the minister says that uh, Korea is not for regime change. The Secretary of State from the Department of State also said, included this in one of the four notes. However, this was uh, not turned out to be a unified policy from the Washington, D.C. But anyway, uh, we would welcome any signs that would lead to, that would be conducive to peace, stability, or to the reduction of tension. Instantly, we, the foreign ministry issued a statement saying that we welcome both parts of the same peninsula to have a dialogue at the beginning of this year, we would regard it as a good sign. If you could just now, as the minister, enter the room, we joke, we say, well, if the two parts of you can solve this question <laughs> or this quandary, then that's good for the whole international community. However, we would want every part, everybody, to make contribution. We still hope there will be a, uh, uh, you know, you cannot just reach the top of the mountain with one stride. Step, right? Step by step. Well, peaceful dialogue for the Olympics, anything, if it's, it can reduce tension, we would welcome. And uh, of course, the minister also mentioned the uh, meeting most recently held in Canada. But to our way of uh, thinking, that was not a very uh, inclusive meeting because certainly some members who were involved in the six-party talks were not invited to this. By the way, if you gather all the United Nations armies involved in the Korean War to participate in the conference, now I ask the audience to, to a show of hands, how many of you believe that that's going to, to have a peace and stability in the region? You get all the uh, you know, parties involved in the war and to, to talk about the peace. Well, so I, I hope that there will be more inclusive uh, values. For that being said, uh, so what we, we also have a challenge of saying that is, uh, we have a unity of opposite, like a yin and a yang balance between yin. So whenever there was a tension at the end of last year, everybody was worrying, was there going to be a showdown? And because there was this test, United Nations sanctions, China was carrying out you know, just to the letters. However, we were worried you know, at the tension of the, of, of the time. So as researchers of international relations, we hoped that there might be a window of opportunity. However, if the two parts of the same Korean Peninsula sit together, now you talk about the Winter Olympics, we keep fingers crossed. Hope you'll reach you know, some consensus leading to a tension in the world. However, what will be, what has been, what will be put on the agenda? Well, that remains also a question mark in the international community. Can you, at this stage, apparently not, you focus only on Olympic Games, but eventually, can you talk about the nuclearization? If not, what about uh, at the end of the, <coughs> of the, after the, what after next? After the Olympic Games, when well, everybody had this uh, fanfare, get gathering. Mm. Afterwards, and the uh, United States, so that's a question for my panelists. Are you going to resume your military exercises? If you do, what about the North? They are going to respond. So we 
go back to us to the same cycle. So the I think that I would like to draw your attention to the fact that Chinese foreign minister said that the yeah. dual suspension. I mean, dual, uh, yeah. it's, a, it's a, a track, a, a dual track uh, approach. And suspension for suspension, mm. suspension. You stop or you just temporarily have a mer mm. moratorium for the exercises, while the North stop or give a moratorium to their tests. Mm. Then you create a window of, of, of opportunity. Whichever way, I, I, I think that uh, uh, personal opinion that the six party talks is still something to be pondered about. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, Mr. That was a very comprehensive uh, presentation. And you've told us uh, a key point that we will not walk straight up the mountain, we will go in a zigzag fashion. Yeah. <laughs> so, Secretary Carter, I'm sure you must have spent a lot of time uh, on the Korean issue when you were in government, <coughs> but now you have the good fortune of having left government <laughs> and being in, in, being in academia where you can speak independently and, and, and think, you know, sure. uh, we don't have to be constrained by government policies. I wonder whether, so in your new, with your new hat, in a sense, if you can sort of give your sort of new helicopter perspective sure. on this uh, issue, and why, in a sense, why, why is it that despite all this effort, uh, we haven't really significantly gone forward? What, sure. what are the fundamental Well, I've been working obstacles? on this since 1994, and worked on a, the, what was then, an airstrike on Yang Beyond that I thought, I thought that year would be carried out. Mm -hmm. That was my job in the Pentagon in 1994. So I've been at it you, a long time. But I've also been it. to North Korea. I was part of the Perry process in the late uh -huh. uh, 90s. So I've been, been in part of all, all sides of it. Let me, let me start with what uh, uh, my colleagues uh, said. Much of what they, they said I absolutely agree with, and in particular, uh, everything that Minister Kong uh, said, uh, it is a good thing. The Olympics uh, rapprochement is a, is a good thing. Um, I, I don't think it bears much on the nuclear issue. Mm. It is a good thing, even in the security sense, because it makes a little bit less likely a, uh, uh, an incident or a provocation between North and South, which is one of the several fuses that could cause this thing to uncoil on the Korean Peninsula. And I don't need to tell anybody in this room, it is an ugly scene if there is war on the Korean Peninsula. This is not like anything the world has seen since the last Korean War, even since World War II. It is not something to be trifled with. And we know the outcome. I, I'm, I'm confident of the outcome, which is the uh, South Korean and US armed forces will destroy the North Korean armed forces and the North Korean regime, but it, it is not something to take, uh, take lightly. As if to remind us that the Olympics won't bear upon the military scene, I understand that the North Koreans are planning a massive military parade mm -hmm. immediately before the Olympics. <laughs> you can count on them. Uh, and so that will, that will be everyone's, uh, so everyone's mind. Nevertheless, it's a good thing. On the nuclear front, um, uh, I believe uh, that uh, there is a possibility that a form of coercive diplomacy, which has ingredients that my two colleagues have described here, can work. I believe it must be attempted. Uh, I hope it is being attempted. Uh, I can't speak for my successor, Jim Mattis, or for uh, Secretary Tillerson, and I don't know exactly what they're doing or whether they're supported it fully in what they're doing, but uh, I know what I would do, and it goes something like this. Uh, be, and I've seen this work from time to time. Uh, it worked a little in the mid-90s, worked a little in the late 90s, worked a little in the 2005, 2006, uh, period, so there is a history of it working, and, and an, a lot of blame to go around for why things weren't sustained at the time, and history is not clear on that score, but it is clear that, it, that something like this uh, worked for a time. Um, and I'll, I'll begin, Mr. Ambassador, you asked a very good yeah. question about which comes first, the, the North Korean action of the sanctions. <laughs> well, it doesn't do any good if the sanctions come after. The whole point of diplomacy is to get the sanctions out in front of the North Korean action. In other words, and say, if you do this, 
this is what will happen to you. Not you did this, therefore this is what we're going to do, do to you. That is emotionally satisfying, but it's not instrumentally effective. And so what has worked has been, has been uh, I'll call it coercive diplomacy, wherein uh, the uh, North Koreans are basically at each juncture given two paths. And it's their choice, not our choice, whether things lead in a bad direction mm -hmm. or a good direction. And so no more missile te long range missile tests. If you do, here's what will happen to you. If you don't, here's what you can get. No more underground tests. If you do, here's what will happen. If you don't, you need to get out in front of the actions, in front of the motivation. That's what diplomacy is all about. If enough forks in the positive direction are taking, we will climb the hill uh, okay. that the ambassador was talking about. Um, and, uh, and, and even leading uh, to what I think people would ultimately like to see always, which is an end to uh, the Korean War that in, in completely ended in 1953. That's a long way to go, but even if you get halfway up the mountain, you're still getting somewhere. Uh, but that is the path to take. To, that's the first ingredient, step by step, and carrots and sticks out in front of North Korean action mm -hmm. and their choice. Second ingredient is we have, it has only been effective when the United States, South Korea, Japan, and China all together marshaled their carrots and sticks. And the reason for that is quite simple. We're stronger that way. Uh, we, the United States, speaking from my own country, has lots of sticks. We're not big in the carrots department when it comes to North Korea, uh, and not likely to be. Uh, my colleagues to the right, their, their, their countries have a broader portfolio. And so you have more powerful tools when we're all together. And China, um, excuse me, um, North Korea is faced with a unified phalanx. Now that takes a lot of work to get four <coughs> countries together and have a coordinated diplomatic strategy. But it has been done in the past. Uh, so that is what I would do now. I, I think that that form of coercive diplomacy, step by step, coordinated carrots and sticks of four countries is the best shot. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm realistic also, and I just have to end by saying, as a former Secretary of Defense, that uh, since I could never be sure that that would work, deterrence and defense must be pursued. Deterrence means readiness. It means the strong alliance between the United States and South Korea. By the way, South Korean forces have gotten so much better year upon year for decades now. It is a formidable force um, and not nearly as unbalanced in terms of its capabilities with the United States to contribute to victory uh, as, as, it once, uh, as it once was. And I'm confident that that victory uh, would occur, but I've warned you uh, what, it, what it looks like. Deterrence requires those exercises. And so it is not a uh, advisable trade uh, that we trade further North Korean uh, absence of provocation for exercises that contribute to deterrence. That's an apples and oranges thing. It's a nice trick, but no. Uh, and we, we, uh, it's, it's, it's two, two unequal things. Uh, but um, uh, the United, and I, I, I think as we look forward, we will have to consider uh, introducing more kinds of systems on, more kinds of forces onto the Korean Peninsula, uh, helping our South Korean allies in new ways. Uh, and so forth, if that is what deter def deterrence requires. As far as defenses are concerned, we have missile defenses of the United States, we have missile defenses of South Korea, uh, of Japan. Those are necessary. Uh, we continue to make investments in them. We're doing that with THAAD and South Korea now, and I expect more, more of that um, because we have no choice. Uh, if this goes forward, we'll need to do more, both in defense and deterrence terms. But I hope that's not necessary because I hope this diplomatic path that gets us up that, that mountain all together 
uh, can be uh, uh, pursued, and uh, that's by far and away the better path. Secretary Gata, you mentioned uh, diplomacy, and you also mentioned that you've been to Pyongyang. Eh? Mm -hmm. You know, as, as, a, as someone, a former diplomat myself, I, when I look at the history of diplomacy, you know, diplomacy began especially with the key concept of diplomatic immunity. Because ambassadors in the old days, <laughs> when they went to enemy capitals, would have their heads cut off. <laughs> and so diplomatic immunity was created to make sure that when ambassadors went to an enemy capital, their heads wouldn't be cut off. And so if the purpose of diplomacy was to enable ambassadors to go to enemy capitals, mm -hmm. is, there, is there any possibility that the United States might consider establishing diplomatic relations with yeah, North Korea? Yeah, I think that ought to be part of this path no, that you not, show. Not, not as an incentive, but as a way No, 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 no. I think that's a very fair question. And yeah. if you, you, I mean, you want to show two paths, mm -hmm. one in which things get better, mm -hmm. And another, and, and 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 lead to exactly this kind of advance, mm -hmm. and the other a path where things progressively get ver worse, mm -hmm. worse, which unfortunately could lead to war, mm -hmm. and they need to see that clearly too. And mm -hmm. if it comes to that, by having tried diplomacy, mm -hmm. we will be in the best position one can be in to face that proposition. You know, one of the reasons I knew that North Korea had a border with Russia is I flew over it. <laughs> in a U.S. military aircraft en route to Pyongyang. With, with Russian permission, I hope. And they, yes, of course. <laughs> but we didn't want to fly up from the south just in case not everybody in the, in the North Korean Air Defense Forces got the word that we were coming. <laughs> and they're much, they're, they don't have much in the way of air defenses on the northern border, so it seemed a reasonable uh, way to go. And uh, the Russians um, uh, were, to their great credit, and by the way, until recently at least, the Russians have been... Uh, generally cooperative in this because they have been generally cooperative again I say until recently in in non-proliferation matters so they were delighted to let us fly over uh, that particular little piece of border yeah I, I noticed sorry uh, uh, Ambassador oh. Suga you were about to respond when Secretary Carter was speaking about the <laughs> response to the freeze for freeze <laughs> idea do you want to quickly respond? Because I, I thought it may be good to get at this point some questions mm -hmm. on the floor. So, uh, but if you can briefly respond to Secretary Carter, if you want to. Uh, if not, I can throw the floor open. Uh, actually, I was going to uh, uh, commend uh, Secretary Carter because normally when you uh, expect, what would you expect if a, 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 not a, only a general, but the former uh, Minister of Defense comes to the podium, you expect something. He would talk about the deterrence, about war, about war. But you know, that was a past U.S. Department of War. That was a thing in the past. Now it's <laughs> called the U.S. Department of Defense. <laughs> now, considerable part of uh, Secretary Carter's their presentation just yes, now sure. was about uh, a peace. Yeah. So I, I think, uh, welcome so to you're China. Encouraged, you're encouraged by Secretary Carter's presentation. Uh, well, that's uh, uh, just a, uh, especially the part he talks about the peace. <laughs> yes, we also <laughs> would concur. But as for war uh, or any other deterrent and, and, and solutions, uh, I would like to draw you, because I'm a, a layman, just imagine the costs of war. My feeling is that in the modern uh, situation conditions, uh, there is no uh, winner. Because the North, they were uh, saying that they have the capabilities to turn Seoul into a sea of flame, I mm. quote. They are not really bragging. I think whenever there is even the last chance of peace, we we'll give it a 100% try. Therefore, we say, well, uh, sometimes when we talk to the US uh, counter <coughs> counterparts, what about the suspension for suspension? They said, hey, our military exercises are illegal. Mm -hmm. Their military buildup is illegal. Well. If you, you, you put, you, th you think in that way, that's very hard to, to find. So I wouldn't say it's, it's wrong or, mm -hmm. or, or, or not. But I, uh, finally, US, we would support the fact that eventually US and uh, North Koreans, you would reach an armistice to replace the current. Uh, you, you, you'll find that you find that reach a peace treaty mm -hmm. in, to replace the current 1953. Uh, I mean, okay. that's why Mr. Wang says that it's a dual track. 
we'll try just to provide everything possible so that there would be a, a collision. There would be a time so that all these parties will come to the negotiation table. But war is not <coughs> uh, We have a chap, uh, Mr. Chapman here, so good to see you here. Let's quote something of the former uh, prime minister from uh, Great Britain. And his words, I think, that are still remembered uh, you know, to, to this day. It's better to jaw jaw than war war. <laughs> That's Winston Churchill, right? Yeah, Winston yeah. Churchill. Okay. Okay, uh, 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 well, Minister Kang, you. I think you, uh, there, uh, we're absolutely clear there must never be another war on the Grand Peninsula. Good. You know, this is a country that was uh, built out of the total destruction after the war. And, you know, we are now a model democracy and a thriving economy, uh, one of the biggest economies in the world. And to have this wiped out, <laughs> I think it would just be unconscionable, frankly. So a military solution to this issue is not an option. But that doesn't mean we don't need military might, as Secretary Carter said. We seek a peaceful approach based upon strength, based upon an overwhelming military authority that makes it very clear to North Korea, should we go down this road, it will be their total annihilation, and it will. Mm. And uh, this is embodied in the joint US ROK uh, defense posture uh, that is uh, that needs constant training. So I agree with Secretary Carter, this idea of trading, they're stopping the provocations and we stopping the exercise is really putting apples and oranges. Uh, uh, in, uh, uh, on the one hand, a illegal violation of uh, the international will <coughs> council resolution on the one side, and what is in the end a defensive exercise done with a great deal of transparency in response to the North Korea's provocation. So you can't really put the two things on the side and, and, and trade off. We have put, postponed them uh, out of the spirit of the Olympic truce, uh, but our two militaries, as they do every year, are planning uh, for, for um, these exercises uh, on a regular basis. I think what you say as Secretary Course of Diplomacy is what we are doing exactly uh, when we say maximum pressure campaign making sure that the provocations are met with greater sanctions, <coughs> but also uh, making the, 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 sending the messages however we can in public statements or through messages, whoever can deliver that message to North Korea. One of the problems that we have with this uh, uh, North Korea now is that there's, you know, there's very little channel of sending that message to the current leader. Um, to a much greater extent than it was with his father and his grandfather. Mm. Well, do sanctions come first or uh, the, uh, the provocations come first? I think by now when you have so much provocation and so many sanctions, it really doesn't matter that much. But the last sanctions resolution does have that trigger warning. Should you provoke again, we will do these and these. So, but of course the sanctions are only powerful to the extent that it comes with the unity of the council and getting that unity of the council between the US, the Chinese, and the Russians requires a great deal of work. Um, and, and I think it's in fact a great credit to the unity of the council that they could come together on this issue and, and, and produce these uh, very robust sanctions resolutions. I mean, we know the disunity and the dysfunctionality of the Security Council on so many other fronts. This is the one area where they have demonstrated an extraordinary level of, of, of unity. Mm. You know, and just a very quick question. You mentioned the father and the grandfather mm -hmm. of the current leader. Mm -hmm. Of the three, who was the most reasonable? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yeah, In a yeah, yeah, session, I don't want to make the headlines on this. No, no journalists. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> okay go ahead, Secretary Khan. Oh. And uh, it has gotten worse. Uh. Uh, so the time. grandfather uh, was the most reasonable. Well, he uh, had a bigger vision for his country. He was the founder. Um, uh, my estimation is that the successive leaders have had, each of them, a successively narrower vision of what North Korea is and can be, um, emphasizing more, more uh, the military as opposed to the broader uh, development. And um, 
more and more the cult of personality of the leader, although it was quite strong in Kim Il-sung's uh, days, at least he was the father of the country. And, and that makes it more, no, no question about it, nobody's asking them to change there. I think this point was made earlier, and I think no, it's, no it, it's important. It, it's, it's not, it hasn't been part of the, uh, the philosophy to date of any of us uh, uh, that if North Korea would not carry out provocations and just be there, that by itself would be okay uh, with, with everyone, um, notwithstanding the fact that the the 1953 armistice wouldn't be replaced. Yeah. It would be an okay place to be. Yeah. We're not out to get them, uh, odd as they are. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I think that it, while the provocations are there, that it uh, inevitably we are uh, 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 emphasizing our concerns about them. And for the last two leaders, that has just been used increasingly to turn them inwardly and turn them towards the military um, uh, as the buttress of the <laughs> regime. And that makes it harder for all three of us, mm -hmm. our countries, that, that is, if, one, if they've decided that this is the heart and soul of mm -hmm. what will keep the leader in power, that's yeah. extra hard. Okay, a quick word from Ambassador Sugar, then we'll throw the floor open. Can I get a sense how many questions are out there? I see one in front here. Any other questions out there? Two? Yeah, okay. Uh, go ahead, uh, Ambassador I think Sugar. that for to solve this issue, we need both tactics. Sanctions, United Nations, China is for it. All three parties are for this. That's no, no question. At the same time, uh, I was educated in the, in the West, once my landlord took me to a church, we heard the priest say that, when all the doors are closed, you must manage to have a window open somewhere. We must tell the North Koreans that if you go ahead and do it like this, there's no way. However, you need to tell them the, the, the way which is, is, is best for, for them. For, I, I, therefore, I think that the, just now, it's easy to t t talk about the deterrence, about the military buildup. Yes, everybody, every country has the uh, a department for, uh, for, for, for the army, for the air force, for the, for the navy, et cetera. However, my feeling is that the tit for tat, eye for eye, has been a practice in the last several years, decades, now which proves that this has not worked. Now, Secretary, uh, uh, you were you were there. That was during the time. That was during the Carter administration. Uh, Carter, uh, Clinton, then yeah, Clinton. Uh, uh, you can uh, do. Bush, they, they were uh, good good every, times. <laughs> Six party talks. <laughs> Six party talks. 20, uh, Six party talks ago. before that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All and through that period. Reached some kind of a consensus. We thought that was, you know, the best time. But however, owing to, you know, the change of governments, mm. you know, you can see you see some ups and downs. So I, we think that eventually to solve this issue, as a scholar, mm. we need to give the parties, all the parties, the security. Uh, assurance, mm. military assurance that no regime change or economic security. Yeah. Is security. If you go this way, reforms and go into the market, that's the best way for the country. Okay, now one question, two, let's take three quick questions. If you don't mind, make them short, sharp questions because we don't want statements. We only have 15 minutes left. <laughs> yeah, short, sharp so questions. This is the Foreign Minister uh, Kang. Uh, we've heard Ambassador Suga talk about an open window when mm. doors are closed and uh, Secretary Carter talked about uh, <coughs> options beyond just the military option and that there's some flexibility. So President Moon has indicated a willingness to reopen the Kaesong industrial region, uh, which is in North Korea. Um, and uh, where uh, former Secretary General Ban Ki-moon established a business for peace initiative is something that I work in supporting and we're doing that in, in Korea right now. So what are the prospects of that zone opening as okay. an open window? 
What question at the back there? I think Mr. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, seems so all the world now is uh, uh, trying to force North Korea to change course by the uh, sanctions. However, nobody talks about what the root causes led to today's situation. We have been facing this for 20 years. The, the difference is today is only the degree yeah. of the problem. Why in the last 20 years the behaviors of the related countries, US, South Korea, and China, Russia, what your action and behavior like what we are facing today, not others. If we only uh, accusing North Korea, still the, the problem will still continue. If we look at the last 20 years, they just want to talk to US because they want to their own security. Only country they believe can threaten their life is the United, United States. But United States in the last 20 years never talked to them. And today, when we just talked, you have to denuclearization, otherwise we do something else. But we talked them to this in the past for 20 years already. So this is one thing. And second, you see what happened in, in the other parts of the world. And we see the uh, Qaddafi and Iran issue. They all say do what like the US saw. So we do not de de uh, develop the nuclear weapons, but they are killed. Yeah. And Iran, they never believe you, yeah. but they survive. So this taught to the North Korea. Nobody can provide their security only by themselves. So in Vancouver, people going to ask you to who, ask the question. Yes, <laughs> I just want who can provide their security for long run? And just one question for uh, Secretary Carter. There's a saying in the last 20 years, because US can solve this very e easily, but they never contact directly, talk to them. And the saying says that US would like to have such a tension remain in the peninsula. Only when there's a tension, and then U.S. have a good reason to, to have a military state. And I, I would like you to have a comment on this. Yeah. I should have asked you to identify yourself. Mr. Fu is from the China Petroleum Corporation, and you're from the-, the Religious Freedom Institute. Religious Freedom Institute. And one last question in front, and then we'll, yeah, we'll come back to you, come to you later for the second round. Yeah. Please, can you identify yourself? Sorry. Thank you very much. Uh, one can challenge uh, the view of uh, Secretary Carter that uh, the grandfather had a vision and the grandson is much narrower in his horizon. I would say it's exactly the opposite. Under the grandfather, North Korea was a peripheral state maneuvering between Russia and Ch uh, Soviet Union and China. Now it's a global player, <coughs> whatever we think about this. So the question is, and this is connected to, to, to the last one, uh, I would are we really serious about denuclearization? What is North Korea without nuclear arms? Sorry to say that, nothing. So is it, is it realistic to, 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 to expect it? I think we should reframe the whole discussion. OK, thank you. <laughs> We've had some very challenging questions. <laughs> but your, yours is, I think, an easy one, a case of one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Secretary Carter's got two challenging questions. <laughs> I think, you know, we, there has to be some advance on the denuclearization front uh, before we can start to think seriously about massive economic collaboration. Uh, the whole point of the sanctions is to cut off flows going into the north, and, and therefore, unless we have some progress on the denuclearization front, uh, we would, of course, at some point hope that the complex is reopened, uh, but at this point, uh, it would be premature. But I think, what does North Korea want? As, as you say, I, to, I think to put it in very, very simplistic terms, it wants security guarantees. And it knows that it can only get that from the United States. So in the end, it wants to sit at the table with the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, how to get there is the, is the diplomatic challenge. Um, but I think 
Ms. Secretary Carter says, you know, perhaps after the Olympic, not, not so much uh, traction on the denuclearization front. I do believe that the sanctions are having an effect. All indications, we have evidences and observations. So they are having an effect. It has sent a clear message to the North from the whole of the international community that this is just the wrong thing to do. They need to change course. And while the sanctions are in place, of course, it also slows down the development somewhat. So we need to stick to this message of, of a course of diplomacy, the maximum pressure campaign, but offering them a different way should they change course. And I think it's the unity of that messaging from the United States, uh, South Korea, China, uh, uh, Russia, and, and, the, uh, and Japan um, is, is what will make it work. Okay, Secretary Khalid, you've got some two very challenging questions. Yeah, uh, first of all, I've been to Kaesong, I should say. Sorry? It's a lovely, I've been to the Kaesong oh, oh. industrial facility. I, 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 I liked it, and um, I just want to be absolutely clear. I know that I wasn't confusing to, to Minister Kong, but just so nobody else is confused. I'm all for the sanctions mm -hmm. and the maximum pressure. I just think if you have a diplomatic strategy, you're able to use that instrumentally to affect them before, and I think she was agreeing, agreeing with that. I, 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 don't, I want to make sure that we don't leave any residue of disagreement there. There's not. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I, that, to the other colleagues, the United States is essential to this. Yes. That's why any Americans who say, we need China to fix the North Korean problem, I don't agree with that. I think that's, and uh, you can't outsource it because, <laughs> and, and, and I couldn't outsource it in good conscience as Secretary of Defense anyway, because they're out to get us. They're designing weapons to get us, by, not only us, by the way, but also Japan, who's kind of up there on the list, as, as well as the South Koreans. Um, and uh, so it does require, and I just want to repeat this, the United States, China, South Korea, and Japan working together. You can't pull any one of those parties out and have the full picture. Uh, and certainly you can't take the United States out. Um, you know, it's not, it uh, sure doesn't feel convenient to me to have tension on the Korean Peninsula. So I, I uh, you know, I hear that from Chinese friends and every, occasionally from Russian friends, and it is not convenient for us to be there and on the DMZ. I got, I, I'll tell you that, I, I, I was inconvenient every single day. <laughs> because I worried about it every single day. And it was inconvenient every single day for 28,500 US troops, for millions of South, South Korean friends and allies and, and, and Japanese. Now, I think that, if I may say so, some Chinese and Russians friends suggest that. And what, what, but what is really true it is it is inconvenient for them to have us there. I get that. But sorry, <laughs> uh, then help us help us do something about that. But it's not convenient for us. I darn well understand it's inconvenient for you, um, but that's why you know we ought to join in this together. Do you want to answer the question of our Russian? Culture? Oh no, this is a very profound question, as always, from my my my, my Russian. Uh, 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 colleague, and he started in a different place than I would, but he, but I, I think he, he was asking exactly the right question, which is, is denuclearization a practical, mm. uh, it is the collective position of everybody who has been part of those talks, and I think it is right. I do not agree, and there are a few people who, who, who say this, a few strategists, who say, look, just let them go and it'll be like Brezhnev's Soviet Union. They'll sort of sit there and there'll be deterrence and it won't be a problem. I don't believe that in the case of North Korea. I couldn't recommend that because I don't think that's a safe path. I think that behind the shield of a nuclear arsenal, North Korea will become more provocative and not less provocative. Uh, I worry about that. Uh, there's also the possibility of sale of or loss of control, and then the damage it does to the nonproliferation regime, which is a big deal. Uh, it, it is a amazing accomplishment that with some important imperfections, I don't mean to minimize them, but the world has known nuclear weapons since 1945, 
and most countries on Earth have foregone what is now a technical capability to do it. I mean, after all, North Korea can do it. Almost anybody can do it. It's not a secret. It's a, it's a bit of an industrial to-do to pull it off, but anybody can do it. Um, and uh, that is not something to uh, minimize. Uh, and uh, so for all those reasons, I don't think it's safe to go down that path. Um, and I'm also not fatalistic about it, as I, as I said. I think one can get a, a path to the, it takes a lot of tenacity. It takes all of us working together. Um, and if I didn't see any path, I'd be in a different place. But I, I do think it's worth a shot. Uh, I'm not sure it'll work, which is why deterrence and defense are so important, but it is worth a shot. Yeah, and unfortunately, as usual, when we come to the last three minutes, lots of hands go up. I saw a lady over there, if you don't mind, ask a short, sharp question. Very short, because you've got to finish in three minutes, and I'm sorry, I apologize to the rest, because you should have raised your hands earlier. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kiri. I'm a global shaper, representing the voice of 3.5 billion young people around the world. I have a qu quick key question um, to ask, which is, there, this is a very sensitive and urgent topic for that affects everybody, including the next generation of young people. But we're very disengaged, and we're not really part of the conversation. But there are many, many young people around the world that I got to actually meet uh, through this conference. And a lot of them are asking, hey, what's going on? How do we engage in this conversation? Who's going to make the next galaxy <laughs> if something happens to South Korea and around the world. So um, <laughs> it is obviously an, a very important issue and topic for us and how, what, uh, what's the recommendation that you give to us to engage in this com conversation? That's an excellent way to end by giving <coughs> a message to young people. So each of you, actually you can see from the clock, we have three minutes, you have one minute mm -hmm. each. <laughs> Secretary Carter, what's, seriously, uh, if you have to talk to a group of very young people and give them a message of hope on the Korean Peninsula, what would that message of hope be? Oh, you know, you guys can fix everything we've screwed up. Uh, <laughs> I, that's the message that you give these, these, hey, that's these passing people. The buck. <laughs> don't lose, well, don't lose the, uh, 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 optimism is a sensible uh, frame of mind. And it can be done. Now, one thing you'll all need to do is do what is represented by this panel and the World Economic Forum. You've got to talk and understand and uh, try to bridge uh, divides. Um, you can't always eliminate differences of interests, difference of, of, of perspectives, but wherever you can make them align, do it, and where you can't, you've just got to get along. Uh, because one thing North Korea illustrates is the price of letting things fester. In this case, as the ambassador said, for, for more than half a, a century, uh, you can't let it. So I, I think there's lots of room for hope in this, in this world. I think there's a lot of bright opportunities and not just all problems. Um, and you'll, you'll have them both, um, but you can deal with, with both of them. But you gotta talk to one another. A bit of optimism has come to the room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, excellent Sugar, excellent question. Although Ding Xiaoping says that the future generation may be wiser than the present. <laughs> However, I still hope that the present generation will show up responsibility in leaving the future generation with a world of peace, stability, development and prosperity. There are three things. That is, uh, Sun Tzu, the master strategist, says, do not oppress an enemy who has already been cornered. You've got to find a way, give them security guarantee. And the course of diplomacy or deterrence will not, uh, well, has not worked so far. We've got to have a dual track policy. Eventually, for instance, you, you just now, the Secretary also mentioned the THAAD. Well, that, that's China. I, I don't think that China and Russia welcomes that because it saps our interests. So we hope that you consider all the interests of all the six parties best, consider the interests of 
for peace, stability in the region, in the world, for the future generation. I think that we still give, uh, although there is a slight chance for six-party talks, mm -hmm. we still think that's the way to go. It's okay. Minister Kang, you have the last word yes. for the young people. I think the governments can do much better at public diplomacy. Uh, we tend to not be so good. But at least my new government is very committed to a more robust public diplomacy, both internally and externally. But we also need the creative interest and curiosity and, and patience of the younger generation. These issues cannot be resolved overnight. So your interest, but also your patience and understanding. We, you know, old generations are pretty much boxed in by our experiences and our, the baggage of history, if I could put it that way. So we do need your creative optimism, if I can put it that way, but that has to be balanced with a sense of patience. Um, um, we do this for you, so we need your input. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And for our last later generations. Yes. I'm already <laughs> grandfather of two. <laughs> Are you, you can, grandfather you can see that uh, this is a very difficult issue. <laughs> I'm not sure what progress we made, but at least I would say that there is a consensus. And what's interesting is that Secretary Carter kept saying the three of us, the three of us. So that's very important because it shows a certain degree of consensus, at least uh, between the United States, China, and, and South Korea, that we've got to try and find a diplomatic solution. And it's got to be a balance of carrots and sticks. What that balance is, of course, we can discuss, but it's got to be just cannot just be sticks. It's got to be carrots and sticks, and that, that requires a lot of diplomatic uh, innovation and diplomatic uh, creativity. But at least I would say that uh, if we haven't moved the needle very much, we've moved the needle just a little bit, to saying that maybe there is a zigzag path up the mountain <laughs> 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 to a switching piece, uh, uh, so lasting peace in the Korean Peninsula. But please join me now in thanking this very distinguished... Thank you. Thank you.